this is Crystal and I'm back with another 12 by 12 layout for Hip Kit Club. Uh, today's layout is all about a sketch. So this is for the sketch challenge, Sketch Friday at um, the Hip Kit Club Facebook group. This is this week's sketch. You can see it has a big photo with some journaling and some embellishment and, a, and it's calling for a big title right on the photo. So I needed a large photo to go on this page. So I printed this one. Um, we also had the assignment of scrapbooking friends and family. And um, I went looking through all of my photos for a large or rather a landscape photo of a group of friends or a group of my family and I couldn't find any. So what that tells me is that my family's really bad at taking group photos that aren't at Christmas um, and that I don't take photos with my friends very often. So I will put that on my to-do list and um, try and do better uh, at that. But what I did find was this photo of my dog Foster. Um, this was taken way back in 2013. Uh, we lost Foster just short of two years ago now and um, he was my friend and he was my family. So I thought that would be an appropriate photo to scrapbook for this assignment. So that's the one I'm using. I am using the July kits, which are of course gorgeous. If you saw my um, unboxing video earlier this week, uh, then you saw all the beautiful things that are in this kit. I did kind of weed through and pick out a few things just to narrow it down. There was so much in these kits that I felt like I was just going to be overwhelmed if I had all of it right in front of me. So I, I chose a few papers and then I chose a few embellishments. I'm thinking I'm going to pull my title uh, from this phrase puffy phrase sticker um, package. And then I really wanted to include some florals and um, I love these. Um, tiny phrase stickers and then some rub-ons and some other little things I thought would work well with um, what I have here. So this is what I'm going to be using. I'm, I can pull from um, the other kits if I need to. There are no rules, so we'll see how it goes as I kind of work through this, but that's what I have to start with. So I am going to put you on fast forward and get started. So I'm going to start by just trimming down my photo and trimming the branding strip off of my cardstock. This is Basil, I think Avalanche cardstock. It's textured cardstock from the cardstock kit. And uh, my photo I printed at six by eight. So the sketch calls for a large photo. I just kind of randomly chose six by eight because that seemed like an easy size to crop it to and to print. Uh, next, I'm going to take the photo or the papers rather that I pulled out from the kit and just kind of play around with them and see what I like uh, as layers behind my photo. So I'm just kind of interviewing each one, deciding which one looks best and in what order. And I really like the order I have them in now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start adhering my photo. So I'm going to um, just do a thin border of this Pink Fresh Studio paper around my photo. And then the other two layers are going to be a little bit offset. So I don't want everything to be perfectly concentric around my photo. I want things to be a little bit um, staggered, I guess. So to do that, I am just kind of holding my photo in place and just kind of eyeballing where I want to trim it and then trimming it off. And um, I will adhere them all down in a little bit. At this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted uh, the, any of the layers to be popped up on foam or um, to if I wanted to tuck things in behind them or if I was going to add other things in between the layers. So I haven't quite adhered everything down, but um, it is gonna end up staying pretty much just like this and I will eventually adhere all of that down. So as soon as I got it on the page, I realized it's gonna look pretty blank unless I add something um, to the edges. So I could have um, just used a border around the whole page, but I liked the idea of doing just a border on the top and bottom. So I cut off two strips in two different sizes, a thinner one uh, for the top and a slightly thicker one for the bottom um, from another Pinkfish Studio paper. This is the one with the white flowers all over it. I had tried the other one uh, that's really similar, uh, but it doesn't have the white flowers on it, but I really liked that um, addition of the white in, in that border. I thought it really um, tied in nicely with the other elements on the page. So that's what I'm gonna use. I am uh, working on a title right now. Uh, like I said, the sketch calls for the title to be placed right on the photo, and luckily my photo has lots of room for it, so that um, Pinkfish Studio 
puffy title worked really perfectly just across the bottom of my photo. It fits almost perfectly. It's, it's like it was planned, but it certainly was not. And then I'm just going to start working on embellishing. So I knew I wanted to use that um, dimensional flower from One Canoe 2. So I added that to the bottom and I just took a little bit of the sticky off the back using my fingers, made it a little less sticky so that I could move it around if I needed to. Uh, I also cut out one of the flowers from those uh, pinkfish titles, the, the puffy flowers that are kind of interspersed throughout the titles and uh, stuck that behind there and then I'm adding one of the One Canoe 2 um, rub-ons behind that and nothing is stuck down in place yet. I'm just kind of auditioning um, the different elements to see what I like before I commit to any of it. Uh, so next I'm going to go through these die cuts. These are also from Pinkfish Studio from the Just a Little Lovely collection. And uh, I'm just looking for anything that might work with what I have on the page. And um, I knew that these die cuts were beautiful when I when I did my unboxing, but I didn't realize how, uh, how much I loved all the little sentiments and sayings that are on these. They are just... Um, they're 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 awesome. I I really like them. The sayings are are unique. They're not the you know typical thing you find on scrapbooking products. Um, I I just really like this collection and these die cuts are are pretty cool. So um, I found a few things. I did punch out a little frame and there was a um, flower die cut and then a few um, smaller flowers as well. The one flower die cut that had the same kind of white flowers as the border that I used and then um, a couple just regular flowers and um, I decided that I want to stitch the top and bottom but before I do that I want to make sure I get this rub on in the right place while everything is um, kind of where I like it so this will kind of be my anchor and that way I'll be able to place everything back on the page just the way I had it uh, based off of this so I just used a bone folder to to um, adhere that rub on to the background and now I'm going to pull out my sewing machine and just stitch a straight line through both the top and the bottom just like that. Uh, so now I'm going to use my fingers just to rough up that edge and give it a little bit of texture. Um, so I'm just kind of using my fingernail to run it along the edge and then using my fingertips to kind of roll the paper in a few spots so that you can see that um, the other side of that paper is white and black. It has uh, a white background with some black flowers on it. Um, so you get just a peek of that by rolling up the edges of that paper. Um, now that that is done, I can start adhering all my layers. So I started with that base layer, again, basing it off of um, that rub-on that I added to the bottom. So using that as a guide to where, as to where to put that first layer and then just kind of making sure everything fits as I uh, add the layers on top and adhere them down. Um, so I decided ultimately not to add any foam. I, I felt like there was plenty going on and it would have been um, a large uh, area to pop up. So um, I decided against it and I think it, it looks just fine without um, adding that foam behind the photo. There's plenty of dimension on the page as it is. So I'm just going through and adhering everything down as I had it placed originally. Um, these long skinny titles actually come off of the backing really easily. I was surprised. Um, and all the little pieces inside came out really easily as well. I didn't have to struggle with any of them, uh, but they did stick to my fingers. So I ended up with tiny little pieces of these puffy stickers all over myself. So I was kind of struggling to get those off, but um, a small price to pay for that beautiful title. And uh, now I'm just going to work on this upper cluster. So I thought about using that frame, but once I got it in place, I really didn't like it. I decided I would prefer just to keep it floral. So uh, I added a puffy sticker again from that title sheet and then a couple of the die cuts um, from the die cut pack. And then I'm going to end up adding another rub on. So um, another one of these rose gold floral rub-ons from One Canoe 2 and I actually added it um, on top of that bottom layer. So I'm adding it over the top of the pink and white striped paper that I used as my bottom layer behind my photo uh, just to give it a little bit more interest rather than sticking it all the way on the white paper behind all of those layers. I thought this would just add a little bit um, more dimension to the page. And now I'm just going to adhere down all of these other little bits that I have up there. Um, just using my tape runner to do that. And um, 
I, I feel like there's definitely something missing in that top corner. So um, I think about it just for a minute and I realize that it's the, the green. So there are green leaves on the flowers in the bottom, but there aren't any green leaves on the flowers in the top. So um, I was looking for some green leaves. I found a few on the puffy sticker sheet and I add a couple of those, but the one just wasn't quite the right color. I felt like it was standing out a little bit um, too much. So I was able to find another leaf to match uh, the top one, the top puffy one in the die cut pack. So I decided to use that instead, um, just adhering it down in the same place. And then I feel like it's a bit more balanced. It makes sense with that bottom cluster just a bit more. Um, but it still needs more. The, the page still looks pretty blank to me. Um, I do like simple pages, but uh, it's looking a little a bit empty. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of the embellishments and see what I can find. Uh, I found a puffy heart on that same puffy sticker sheet. Oh, or no, actually it was from the puffy sticker set from that Pink Fresh Studio collection. Uh, and I added that to the top cluster. And then I'm going to also add a few rub-on hearts from those One Canoe Two rub-ons uh, to both clusters. So I add two to this uh, bottom cluster and then I'll add one to the top cluster as well. Um, keeping in mind the concept of visual triangles and trying to make things um, look balanced. I don't stick strictly to the whole triangle idea, but um, I'm always trying to make that um, kind of balanced look happen on my pages. Uh, so there are a few of these uh, phrases that I thought would work on my page, but then I saw one that said shake it off and I thought it, there's no more perfect phrase for this picture than shake it off. So I had to add that. So I added it to the bottom cluster. And then I found another one that said favorite. And even though I already had a tab at the top that said favorite, I decided to replace it with um, this phrase sticker instead. And I had to remove it because I had it too lined up with my layer. So I needed it to be offset a little bit and, and make a little bit more sense to my eye. So I just moved it up a tiny bit so it wasn't perfectly even with that middle layer. And then I do eventually add that um, other tab back in, the one that says favorite. I kind of tried it with and without and decided it looked best with it. So even though um, it's a doubling of the word favorite. I still like the way it looks and this is one of my all-time favorite photos of Foster So um, it's okay with me that favorite is on there twice um, To finish up the embellishing. I'm just going to add some of these enamel dots from pink fresh studio I'm sticking with the kind of salmon -y colored ones that are in this set uh, just because I felt like they worked best with um, the other colors in my my embellishment clusters and just kind of sprinkling them around. I'm, I'm tucking some of them underneath the die cuts um, just to make it look like, um, not like they were added very last, like they were added earlier in the process. And that's pretty much gonna do it. I, I do add some journaling to the page and um, rather than write directly on my finished layout, I decided to test out my journaling on just a scratch piece of paper uh, first, just to make sure that I liked the way it looked on the page. Um, I had thought about typing it, but I wanted a repetition of that script that is in the title. So I decided to handwrite it and uh, I very bravely wrote directly on my background. And um, you'll see here in a second, I actually get to the end and I run out of room for the date. So I end up having to write the date just below it. And I I thought for a minute about different ways I could do it, but ultimately it's fine to just have the date right below the rest of the journaling. So not a big deal, but that's going to do it for this spread. So came together pretty quickly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing my process and there are some close up photos coming up so you can see all the little details to this page. Uh, if you haven't already picked up the July kits from hip kit club, I will have everything linked down below so you can do that if you so choose. And, um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I will see you all back here very soon. Thank you.